So if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis and you're watching this, this is probably something you should be doing on a daily basis. It's gonna get loud here, I apologize. You might wanna turn it down. Blueberries, bananas, and peanut butter. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Ed Dubu, physical therapist from Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. I see a lot of clinics. <laughs> I see a lot of clients in my clinic that either have osteopenia or osteoporosis. And it seems like the main thing they are concerned about is whether or not they should take the medication, which is a very real concern. There are side effects of all medications and osteoporosis medications are no exception. However, as a physical therapist, the thing that I try to get across to them is regardless of whether or not you are taking Fosamax or one of the other medications, it is imperative that you are taking care of business from your end on other parts of the bone building process. The first thing we have to do is make sure that we are on a strength training program. So regardless of whether you're on medications, you have to be on a strength training program. I will put a link right up here to a basic exercise program that I have that you can do at home if you haven't already started to do one. In a perfect world, you are going to the gym and you are lifting as heavy as you can safely for you, but in order to build bone density and to build muscle mass, we have to lift as heavy as we can to improve the signaling to the muscle to say, oh, you know what, Ed's doing something kind of funky, I better get a little stronger. We have to make sure our micronutrients of vitamin D and calcium levels are in check because there is so much that goes into building bone. Then I have the protein talk with clients. Many of my clients are vegans, or vegetarians or pescatarian, and I ask them, well, how much protein are you getting on a daily basis? And they literally have no clue. So this is the first thing that I recommend. I recommend for an, a typical three days, not when you're on vacation or something like that, but a typical three days, track your food. Everything that goes into your mouth gets written down on a piece of paper. And then go back and get a, an estimation of how much protein you're getting on a daily basis. Because if you are strength training, and if you are watching your calcium, and you are getting enough vitamin D, and you're doing all these great things, you're working out as hard as you can safely for yourself, but you are not getting adequate levels of protein, you are leaving gains on the table. You are making it that much harder to build muscle mass, which in turn will help with sarcopenia, as well as helps to improve bone density. So how much protein do we need? If you look at the RDA, it tells you that we need 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So you ready for some fancy math? For this example, someone's gonna weigh 130 pounds and we need to convert that into kilograms first and so we're gonna divide it by 2.2 and that's gonna give us approximately 59 kilograms. And then we know we want 0.8 is what the RDA recommends. So we're gonna times that by 0.8 and that gives us approximately 47 grams of protein per day. They come back in after tracking their protein and probably 80% of my clients are nowhere near even the minimum amount of protein required as by the RDA. Now, if you look at the literature, the RDA consumption is still not nearly enough for what we need to optimize bone health and reduce the chance of sarcopenia, which is the muscle wasting away as we get older. A couple things happen. Number one, we don't eat as much as we start to get older, so our appetites are less. Um, there's a tendency to eat less meat. Sometimes we have dietary issues, and so maybe we're not having dairy, so there's not the calcium, there's not the cottage cheese, there's not the milk, so therefore we're not maybe getting the protein that we need. So there's all sorts of things to consider. But what I tell my clients is that we need to be up more like 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms per body weight daily. So what that would mean for the person that weighs 130 pounds, to do the math again, so remember 130 pounds is about 59 kilograms. So if we were to take 59 and times that by 1.2, that's gonna give us more like 71 grams. That's for 1.2 kilograms. Now if we want 1.5, we're gonna take 1.5 and we're gonna times that by 59 and that gives us 88.5. If you look at the 0.8 requirements, that's roughly 47 grams of protein a day, okay? That's at the bare minimum, and some of my clients aren't even there. I want them to be more in that range between 1.2 and 1.5. So at 1.2 kilograms at 130 pounds, that puts us at about 70 grams per day. 
and then 1.5 kilograms puts us at about 88 grams of protein per day. Now you do need to be careful if you have any type of kidney disease. If you do, then make sure that you talk to your doctor first. But otherwise, according to the literature, a high protein diet or higher protein diet is generally safe. In addition to the strength training programs, it's imperative that you work on balance. I will put another link right up here to a video I did on balance because the best way to prevent a fracture is to not fall in the first place. And that brings us back to my daily protein shake that I do. Although I don't have osteopenia or osteoporosis, I am trying to maximize my strength gains because sarcopenia or a loss of strength affects all of us as we get older. As men, we don't have to worry as much about osteoporosis, but we still have to worry about muscle wasting. That's where I recommend my clients, you know what, have some protein powder on hand. Because I'll tell you what, I don't eat as much now as I'm getting older. I mean, I'm 54 and I just don't have the appetite that like my 24 year old does. But if I can have two scoops of protein and some peanut butter in here, that's gonna give me about 45, 50 grams of protein in one glass. Because sometimes you just don't feel like eating two chicken breasts every single day. If you have a favorite protein recipe that you wanna share, leave it down below in the comments. If you have even questions about protein intake and osteoporosis, let me know. In the meantime, go back, hit the gym, get your protein shake. It's not just for bodybuilders, it's for everyone. All right guys, take care, good luck.